Speakers, publishers, consultants, coaches, and info marketers unite. The Speaking of Wealth Show is your roadmap to success and significance. Learn the latest tools, technologies, and tactics to get more bookings, sell more products, and attract more clients. If you're looking to increase your direct response sales, create a big-time personal brand, and become the go-to guru, the Speaking of Wealth Show is for you. Here is your host, Jason Hartman. Welcome to the Speaking of Wealth Show. This is your host, Jason Hartman, where we discuss profit strategies for speakers, publishers, authors, consultants, coaches, info marketers, and just go over a whole bunch of exciting things that you can use to increase your business, to make your business more successful and more and more passive and more and more automated and more and more scalable. So we will be back with a great interview. Be sure to visit us at speakingofwealth.com. You can take advantage of our blog, subscribe to the RSS feed, and many other resources for free at speakingofwealth.com. And we will be back with a great interview for you in less than 60 seconds. Now's your opportunity to get the Financial Freedom Report. The Financial Freedom Report provides financial self-defense in uncertain times, and it's your source for innovative, forward-thinking investment property strategies and advice. Get your newsletter subscription today. You get a digital download and even more. The price, only $197. Go to jasonhartman.com to get yours today. My pleasure to welcome Deirdre Breckenridge to the show. She is the CEO of Pure Performance Communications in Marlboro, New Jersey. She's also the author of a new book entitled Putting the Public back in public relations. Deirdre, welcome. Oh, thank you very much, Jason. It's a a pleasure to speak with you. Well, it's a pleasure to have you on the show. And before we start, I must apologize to our listeners. If my voice sounds hoarse, it is. I'm fighting a cold. And so, Deirdre, please do most of the talking for this interview. (laughs) Well, it's a good thing I like to talk a lot. (laughs) Well, this will be a perfect match then. So tell us about, you've been in the uh, public relations industry for a long time, and most of our listeners are speakers, authors, publishers, and there have been so many changes in your industry. I mean, everybody thought there were a lot of changes 12, 13 years ago with the advent of new internet methodologies and so forth. But then, uh, once again, we had a whole other metamorphosis with social media. Kind of take us maybe through the timeline of the last couple of decades, if you would. Oh, sure. My my goodness, the, the changes have been monumental. I think that with the latest change with social media, it's literally knocked us on our, our side. Not to say, you know, we... We were doing pretty well with getting used to the Internet. I, one of my third book actually was called The New PR Toolkit, and that was Strategies for S- Successful Media Relations Online. Um, so we were learning how to build relationships with journalists online, uh, and then suddenly as we were building our newsrooms and we were sending out our e-newsletters and learning HTML blasts, Next thing that happened was something called social media. And unfortunately, and, and you know, I can raise my hand too, even though I started looking at social media in 2003, this was even behind the, the times in a sense. Social media was out there in 1998 and 1999, and I got a hard kick in the pants with social media um, in a meeting with a CEO of a tech company who, after we presented our strategy, said, yeah, what about the new stuff? And what I realized then in 2003 that myself and probably many of my peers really weren't prepared and didn't understand this new approach. So I really did some long, hard research, rolling up my sleeves, finding out that hey, this is a, a brand new approach. It's very exciting, but it's, it's posed challenges for us as well. But, you know, the good news is that we've seen some great progress from PR professionals and, and all communications professionals where we understand that, you know, we've always been about relationships. Social media helps to make better relationships and direct connections. So I, I think we are delving into some new territories, um, never you know charted. We haven't charted the waters before, and it's um, something that I'm looking forward to 
seeing how we embrace and take it further uh, for ourselves personally, because I'm a big um, advocate of doing it yourself and then taking it back into your organization. So lots of changes and a, a lot to think about. Well, tell us, Deirdre, if you would, what is involved in a in a public relations campaign nowadays? And, and think of it as though you have a client who's a speaker, an author, a publisher. Is it sending out news releases? Is it doing their Facebook page, their Twitter account? Tell us about that. Okay, well, I'm a hybrid. So because I grew up in traditional PR, I am definitely not somebody to say, oh, abandon all your old techniques and just move into this new digital and social realm. I believe that you always have to, whether you're a speaker, an author, or whoever you are, you always have to be thinking about where are the people that I want to reach? Where are they congregating? Um, what are their issues? How can I help them? And, and how am I going to reach them the most effective way? So it used to be where you sort of did some research on your your audience and messages were kind of handed down. You you had them, you know, based on your experience in the industry, you would formulate your strategy and part of the tactics could have been news release development. You know, or maybe it was all about a thought leadership program. The one thing that has changed so much for everybody and, you know, I've said this word way too many times, and probably it's in one of those books of don't ever say this word again because we all know what you're talking about, but it's the ability to listen first, to monitor communities. And, you know, yes, will you still be using newsletters to reach people if they're there? Absolutely. If they find them valuable, keep doing it. But when it comes to the social web, and if you know that you have groups in social communities that you want to reach, it's no longer just formulating these messages that serve your purpose. The biggest thing that, and the biggest change is the listening approach where you start monitoring and tracking for keywords, keywords that are relevant to you, to what you're about, and what you can then turn into meaningful information, advice, uh, things that people need, help them with their questions. So the monitoring exercise is so key. And the keywords usually, you can go into any platform. I don't care if it's a social network, a micromedia network. You can go into video sharing platforms, bookmarking platforms, you name it. And you can go in and start tracking to see, number one, is anybody talking about me specifically? Are they talking about my books? What is it? What are some of those trending topics that they really need help with? And as you identify in different social communities that either, yes, they are talking, so gosh, I need to be there because they're either saying great things and I want to thank them and join in the conversation, or maybe they don't understand me and they're bashing my brand, so I better explain myself. Whatever the case may be, it's that opportunity to make a better connection to provide more meaningful information and to be a resource. So your programs and your strategies are based on that. You're not just sending out your own messages, but you're developing the information that's actually suiting somebody's needs. I today, every day, am listening so that I can develop better blog posts and contents and work material into my books because I hear the pain that's out there. So I address them. Absolutely. So no question that listening is important. We have two ears and one mouth. So that's what God gave us. We should use them proportionately. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, I can see how one does that really on Twitter, because you can you can use Twitter to sort keywords and so forth. You can use search engines to do that. But tell us the specific granular mechanical method by which someone listens, if you would. Well, you'd be surprised because there are some powerful dashboards that aggregate conversations. So in some cases, like Addictomatic, you don't you can just plug in what it is that you're searching for and it will pull up all of the mentions through Google, through Yahoo, through Twitter. If there are any videos that mention a, a person that you're searching for, the videos will be pulled up through YouTube or let's say Vimeo. So you want to be able to, because it would be really time-consuming, 
if we mechanically had to go into every different platform to go and search. So Addictomatic is a free tool. There are other, you know, free tools that do this to help, or you could go for some of those, um, if you have the budget, and it, believe me, it's worth the investment, there are some powerful monitoring software platforms like Radiant 6 or Sysimos, Vocus, you know, there's um, Lithium. There, there are many powerful platforms that can really do the work for you. Now you're not just monitoring for keywords, you're getting into sentiment. So you're actually seeing it, how, how people are feeling, positive, neutral, or negative about your brand, your share of voice and comparing it to your competitors, which is really helpful. So you can do a lot in those specific platforms. And typically those subscriptions can be anywhere from $2,000 a year maybe on up to several thousand a year? Absolutely. You know, so some of those platforms, depending on whether it's based on the number of mentions or the number of keywords that you're using, it uh, could be 500 a month, it, it could be much higher than that. So it, if you're a big brand, 30,000 mentions a month is nothing. So your, your base 500 a month would certainly be a lot higher. So yes, they, they can be costly. So these are not necessarily appropriate for the individual speaker, author. They're usually more for PR firms or bigger brands with in-house PR departments, probably. But an ambitious solopreneur type could use them as well. You know, maybe a good question to ask is, speakers are usually authors as well. How do they get more speaking engagements? Do you want to talk about that a little bit? Oh, sure. I, I love this question because I base a lot of what I do on getting more speaking engagements. So one thing that is really effective, hoping that everybody is familiar with, let's say, Hootsuite or even TweetDeck, um, you can monitor for call for papers, <laughs> call for speakers. Um, my, my area is public relations, social media, and you know, use one of your streams in, in Hootsuite to monitor or on TweetDeck. And you'll see people who literally are talking about, you know, different calls for speakers to, to go into conferences. That, that is definitely one way to stay up on, you know, your submissions. Another way, um, especially on Twitter, is to be a part of the community chats that are in your industry um, where you know there are certain pain points. Now, I happen to have developed my own community group on Twitter. It's called it's a hashtag PR stud chat. I did it with uh, Valerie Simon, who is my co-founder. And, you know, you're, you're listening. Our, our group is for students, professionals, and educators in, in public relations, and they're all interested in this move from traditional PR to social media. Speaking with them, it, it's daily conversations. You're, you're giving thought leadership expertise. When you participate in these types of forums, you're being recognized as a, a thought leader, which then in turn, some of the connections that you're making turn into, Deirdre, can you speak at such and such conference? Deirdre, you shared a, a blog post through Twitter that you, you know, had on your blog, and, and my blog is PR2O Strategies. It's DeirdreBreckenridge.com. Um, you're using your thought leadership in these conversations, which in turn leads to more speaking. I also think that blogging helps quite a bit with thought leadership. I've, I've set up my blog to talk about topics that are you know, exciting yet painful and that people need to move through. And there's a, a little area that says, contact me if you, know, you have a question or you want me to speak. So it's little things like this that you can look like the thought leader, you know, you have to act like the thought leader, do, do the work behind it, but then make it yourself available so that people can contact you. I think that people should know that who you are online really is who you need to be all the way around. Uh, I've heard this a lot. There are some, you know, great personalities. We see them all the time. There's, there's rock stars. Uh, if the way you present yourself online, your personal brand, it is very important to follow through. In public relations, we are big on our integrity and building the relationship. You need to be that person in real life, too. 
so if you, you know, I think my my brand is all about education and, and helping people. Um, I'm that way in real life, and I, I carry it forward. So I just think that, you know, how you are in the virtual, and you want to take it to the physical. That's the best thing that you can do. All of this social media should lead to personal relationships uh, in real life, shaking hands, because that's where business is done. So I just believe in be your brand, say, say who you are, and then follow through. It's, it's very easy to present yourself one way, especially through social media, and then not be that person in real life. Yeah, well, this is nothing more than an expansion of oneself. It's not an alter ego. It's you. Well, maybe it is an alter ego by that sense, but it's simply an expansion of one's own self. Talk to us a little bit, if you would, about maybe news release distribution, good old-fashioned PR, but taken to the the new modern world, and some of the websites that you suggest and and methodologies to distribute news releases, and and maybe anything on formatting news releases too. What has changed there? They're probably getting shorter. Attention spans are shorter. We know that. Yeah, there, there's a lot of changes in, in news releases. Um, I do take a hybrid approach where I have clients who still need the far reach, the distribution of a wire service. At the same time, you want the great functionality that PR20 can bring to you. So some of some of the service providers that have news releases that allow you to get out there to traditional outlets as well as you can share them in social communities. They have more multimedia function. There's more resources and, and hyperlinks. You can embed your YouTube videos and your, your podcasts. A service like that, which I use, is PR Web. So I find out that they sort of give you the best of both worlds. Now, you know, they're the less expensive option. You, you still have Business Wire and PR Newswire that have great services. They have tremendous reach. I mean, these are the big guys in the industry. And they, too, have this 2.0 functionality where you want your news release to get out there and get to the outlets and get to the journalists. You want to make sure that they get to the bloggers, but at the same time, you want to make sure that consumers as well, that they're searchable, they're search engine optimized, that people can find your releases and then have the ability to share them, whether it's on Twitter or LinkedIn or Facebook or Google Plus or wherever. So there is a lot of new media capability um, where it used to be you just send out a, a straight release and wait to see where it landed. Now you can track the, the, the sharing. So in, in Pitch Engine, this is another, this is more a social media release, which is uh, very different than a traditional release. It's housed on a blog platform. That's when you want to use a community tool where you build a release, and Pitch Engine allows you to do this. You build a release, and people just pull from it. And this release looks a little bit different because you had asked about the format. As a community tool, it's more bulleted. You're having hyperlinks for resources. You're definitely building in your images for people to share and download. Your, your videos are there. But this doesn't cross a wire. So this is completely different. This is more a customized story, a tool that builds community that people can comment around. So I really think you have to step back to say, okay, you know, who is it that I want to reach? As a speaker myself, I don't think that when I talk to PRSA in a particular program in a region that I'm going to send that out over the wire. I think that's a more customized story where I can sort of dig into a topic, and that would be a social media release that I'm going to share in my communities, which is a very different approach. So you can have the total social media approach with a social media release. You can go a hybrid approach using something like PR Web or looking into what PR Newswire or Business Wire do. Um, Or, you know what, You, you can still just have a traditional news release that goes out over the wire. Um, However, I am going to throw this out too. A lot of traditional releases used to be on the IR side for financial related information. Because they're Um, they're required by the SEC. Yes. Now the SEC, according to Regulation FD back in 2008, 
says that if your website is a primary channel, if you're a big publisher and you're a public company and your website is a primary channel, you can use your IR newsroom as a place where you can disclose SEC information, your financial reporting. First of all, define IR and, and define primary channel. Okay, so investor relations is IR. And primary channel, um, and I believe this is through the SEC's Reg FD, really means that this is a area where your investors, your financial people, um, your analysts, that they are able to get to, and there is certain information that needs to be available. It has to be built a certain way. I don't have the specifics of Reg FD in front of me, but companies, you know, of course, larger larger companies have jumped on this, like Google, like Microsoft. Um, Netflix has actually done this. There, there's a, a whole list of companies who who do it because they realize that they're saving money by using their own newsroom as a place to uh, invite the investors to come in and to do their financial reporting. So that's a huge, huge cost savings. They don't have to do national news releases for every bit of information like they used Correct. to. That is a giant, because those, those news releases on the wire services are very expensive. Even yeah. for large companies, if they're, oh if they're national, that, that can really get costly if you're doing a lot of them. Yeah, I heard it's about $15,000 a, a quarter for companies. Generally, um, in terms of their announcements that, that go out over the wire, you know, on the investor relations side. So there is a, a big cost saving. At the same time, there are still some, lots of tweaks that need to be made. It's, it's a transition, you know, moving through the wire service into your own portal that is, that is deemed, you know, an appropriate channel uh, for you to place this type of news. So I think we're going to see a lot more on the topic. It's very interesting, but you can see just based on what I've said from the social media release to this hybrid approach from a traditional release to releasing it on your own website, financial information, that's huge. That's a, that's a heck of a lot of change. Yeah, it sure is. It sure is. Let's get back to speakers for just a moment and maybe sure. we'll kind of start finishing up here. What about speakers bureaus nowadays? Okay, so you know what? I, I'm not even in a speakers bureau. Um, I would love to be. I still think that they're valuable, and I'm noticing that some of my peers are being listed. I'd, I'd love to chat with some of them to see how that's working out for them. With the speakers bureaus, what I've noticed through my own experience is that you know they're looking for a certain knowledge level. Maybe it's a, a number of books that you've published or, or what you've done in the past. I think that is an excellent place to be. And I know some folks who are high, high-end speakers who are doing well. But I think it, it's hard for the, you know, I don't want to say the little guy, but the little guy who's starting out and can't get into the Speakers Bureau and honestly doesn't have uh, enough money for a public relations firm even to start their Speakers Bureau because that takes money, too, in the form of a retainer, and we're going to publicize you, and we're going to create a, a speaking program. Social media does give you a tremendous benefit in the fact that you can do – it takes time, um, but I think I built my speaking program based on my books through social media. So I, I think that, yes, speakers bureaus, that, that's great when you get to a certain level. But, boy, let me tell you, getting to that level, you can really use social media to your advantage. Yeah, no question about it. Well, Deirdre, just to kind of wrap all of this up, what would you like people to know? And, and maybe actually before you do that, before we wrap that up, talk to us about what your firm does. Do you, is it a done for you type of program or is it a, a, a program where you teach people how to do it? or a combination of both? Oh, thank you for asking. So Pure Performance Communications, it is, uh, we are a strategic communications and technology firm. We work with you to um, help you with your strategy so that you understand it, it could be traditional, digital, and social. What is the best approach to making sure there is maximum impacts with the audiences that you want to reach? A lot has to do with transitioning sometimes 
not only your approach, but it could be your own organization. And really, a lot of it is getting into training, where I'm, I'm noticing that people just need to be trained on, you know what, give me my strategy and get me started. So we're, we're helping on, you know, for the smaller businesses and, and even some of the medium size to show you what your program is going to look like and, and how we'll set you up through your social media channels and work with you on your listening and your monitoring and, and what your measurement should be. Because if you're not measuring, then there's no, you know, no question in my mind, you shouldn't even be out there talking up a storm because you have to show return and there has to be, you know, accountability. So that's what we do best is thinking strategically for you, showing you a great program creatively through communication and technology, and then training you so that you should be able to do this moving forward for yourself where we're just sort of spot checking and popping in and and helping where needed. Well, Deirdre Breckenridge, thanks so much for joining us today. And you did give out your website before, but just give it out once again, if you would. Yes, it's pureperformancecom, with two M's, dot com. And also check out my blog, deirdrebreckenridge.com. Thanks so much. Thanks a lot. What's great about the shows you'll find on jasonhartman.com is that if you want to learn about investing in and managing income properties for college students, there's a show for that. If you want to learn how to get noticed online and in social media, there's a show for that. If you want to know how to save on life's largest expense, there's a show for that. And if you'd like to know about America's crime of the century, there's even a show for that. Yep, there's a show for just about anything. Only from JasonHartman.com. Or type in Jason Hartman in the iTunes store. This show is produced by the Hartman Media Company, all rights reserved. For distribution or publication rights and media interviews, please visit www.hartmanmedia.com or email media at hartmanmedia.com. Nothing on this show should be considered specific personal or professional advice. Please consult an appropriate tax, legal, real estate, or business professional for individualized advice. Opinions of guests are their own, and the host is acting on behalf of Platinum Properties Investor Network, Inc., exclusively.